Today I'll be explaining a simple LED dimmer circuit that can be made using only a small number of components. This circuit configuration could also be used as a DC motor speed controller. To get started, let me introduce the components used for this circuit. The heart of this circuit is the 555 timer IC. This is a versatile IC consisting of comparators, a flip-flop, resistors, and a discharge transistor. Other components needed are a potentiometer, two diodes, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, an N-channel MOSFET, and two 1K resistors. Finally, you'll need whatever you would like to use for your output load. If you have a simple through-hole LED, remember to include a series current limiting resistor. Or, if you have an LED strip or a small DC motor, just be sure that it will operate properly according to the supplied voltage. Now let's take a closer look at the circuit schematic. Here I have a simulation of the circuit which will show how the current flows. The internal operation of the 555 timer IC is also shown here. For this circuit, the 555 timer is operating in A-stable mode, meaning the output is generating a continuous square wave that alternates between the high and low states indefinitely. This works by charging and discharging the capacitor rapidly. Keep in mind here that this simulation is operating much slower than it would in reality. The frequency of the output is currently set to 1 kHz, meaning that this LED would actually be turning on and off 1000 times per second. Now to better understand the circuit, I will slow down the animation further so that we can see more easily the changes in states. When the output is active, the capacitor is charging from the 12 volt supply, through the 1K resistor, through the top diode, then through the potentiometer. The capacitor will continue to charge until the voltage reaches the threshold value of the comparator within the 555 timer IC. The trip point is set at 8 volts, which has been set by the internal resistor divider to be two-thirds of the 12 volt supply. Once the capacitor charge has passed 8 volts, the comparator outputs a high, the flip-flop state is toggled, and the output turns off. At this point, the discharge transistor becomes active, and the capacitor will begin discharging. Current will now pass through the bottom leg of the potentiometer and bottom diode to ground, because the top diode is reversed biased. Therefore, the two diodes in this configuration provide a way to have different charge and discharge times for the capacitor according to the resistance set by the potentiometer. The capacitor continues to discharge until it reaches 4 volts, which is one-third of the supply voltage. That completes one full cycle of the oscillation. This process of charging and discharging the capacitor repeats indefinitely, switching the output between high and low states. The difference in charge and discharge time set by the potentiometer creates an adjustable output pulse width which allows for controlling the average output power delivered to the load. This control technique is known as pulse width modulation, or PWM. Now understanding the theory, we can move on to building the circuit. A few notes about this circuit. You can change the frequency by using a different value for the capacitor and potentiometer. There are some calculators online which can help you figure out the specific values. I found that for these LEDs, operating at too low of a frequency caused visible flickering. I selected around 1 kHz for the operating frequency, and I would recommend generally staying above 500 Hz for LEDs. Another comment is to help understand why this circuit is valuable. You might think why not just use a potentiometer in series with the LED to dim it. That way, the potentiometer changes how much current flows through the LED. While this could work for one or two LEDs, the problem with this method is that it is very inefficient and becomes a problem when driving many LEDs. The large amount of current needed by having many LEDs will cause a lot of power loss within the potentiometer, resulting in much wasted heat. That completes this project and it is now ready for use. I've provided a link with the circuit schematic in the description below. Leave a comment with your thoughts and a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.